Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Stephen, do you have any ability to do any back testing at all, or what would be the best way to do something like that? Uh, basically, what I do is I actually go to your website. Uh, Okay. Uh, let me go to the ISC website, okay. and I actually use the ISC's calculator to uh, to make some uh, yeah. So what I I. The way I back test is like people always say like, hey, what happened? You know, how do you know like, you know, when what's a good time to sell volatility? So let's just say like, you know, this year you're like, hey, um, let's use the whatever stock we can use. Let's use uh, which one should I pick? I guess I can use the British pounds. We're already there. Try the Canadian. So, Try CDD. All right, sounds good. Okay, so Canadian, you can see like November 21st, right, the volatility was relatively high. So let's say at this point, you're saying, okay, let me actually show you the volatility chart right here. So like this is the 30 day right now, 60 and 90 days. So we actually have volatility. Uh, so these are the longer term months and you can see on November, it basically has been high as it's been in two years, both the front month and the back month, right? So let's say like at this point you're like, okay, I think by February or something, you know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna go that it's not gonna move too much, but the volatility is too high. So let's actually type in, and this is on the IC website, so you guys can actually go and and check it out and. This is the calculator right here. So on this day, so on November, let's say the stock uh, looks like it was close around 129 or 130. So let's go over here. You know, the strike price, let's make it 130. Let's make the underlying price 130. So you're actually selling the at the money straddle, right? And and you can see. Let me go back real quick just to show you guys what the volatility was on November 1st. If you look at the box, you'll see on the right side you'll see the IV 90 was 22. All right. All right. Right? Oh, so you, right. right. So I actually put in 22, and then I ask it to calculate. Right? But the expiration is three months away. So let's say you're using like a, you know, I'm just pretending it's March, so I'm like actually using this right. to run it forward. Uh, 22. keeps adjusting. So I know people think like, you know, everyone knows exactly what to do, but this, the way I'm doing it is exactly how professionals, they have to put in the time and figure it out themselves. So you can see the bid and ask. So right. theoretically, I don't know exactly if it was this price, but you can see it's like $22, that straddle. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean like $22. So what I do is like, okay, Let's say I pretend I sold a straddle right here, and then I basically move four months forward, and I go, hey, I wonder what the stock price was, and closed at 124. So basically, the stock moved five dollars. So, so 
and you sold the straddle for 2150 so you made a profit of 1650 so that's okay. how much you could have made selling volatility now i realize you know as a retailer you just can't sell naked straddles or if you did it will just take up so much of your margin w what i do is once i know the this value is too high or that's my opinion i'll basically sell all the strikes and you can you know you can pick like four or five individual strikes uh, yourself but you're basically putting on some kind of butterfly or condor or basically selling the meat which is deltas that are between 40 and 60 and you want to buy deltas that are 25 so hey just because you sold a fat uh, straddle does not mean that you're going to make money on it you always want to uh, protect yourself from the unexpected move so what you do is you buy the wings to protect yourself so if you sold the straddle for 22 and let's say you took you know four or five dollars to buy the upside and downside protection you could have still made ten dollars so I know a lot of people say like hey what do I do like hey that's exactly what you do you sell this and if you actually thought the stock was going to go down a little yeah, you can sell like the 22 straddle or you can sell the 20 straddle going forward and you, you know, you would have even made more or you would have been making a slight delta bet as well as a uh, Vega bet. Uh, from, from your experience, does that make sense to the viewers, you think, Steve? Absolutely. Like you said, uh, even though we'd like to say, okay, we're going to sell these calls because we think they're going out worthless or these puts, um, retail investors aren't going to do that, and you know I quite frankly don't. You're right, butterflies, iron condors. Uh, you know you got to think about what makes sense, but also what if you're wrong? And as Stephen, as you pointed out, credit spreads or iron condors make a lot of sense. You're not just going to sell these options naked. Right, right. And and people always ask me like, hey, you know the option chain. There's so many strikes, so many months. You know, how do I know what to trade? And basically, you can follow a simple strategy. Wherever you think the stock is going, that's the strike you want to sell. Whether you're putting on a put spread, you know, a call spread, a butterfly, a condor, wherever you think the stock is going to end up, whether it's, you know, 30 days from now or a year from now, that is the strike you want to sell and you want to buy the strike that you think the stock is going to move away from. You know, so people would say, hey, what's the perfect strategy for me? Well, let me see. Where do you think the stock's going to be two months from now? And if you think CDD two months from now is going to be at 110, then that's the strike you should sell, and you should buy the surrounding strikes. So that's a very easy way for you to come up with any kind of strategy across any kind of time period uh, to put on a position that's most beneficial to your viewpoint. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.